you can tell by the video that I'm somewhere a wee bit modern looking today, but where am I? Yes, today on Exploring Scotland's History, for a change we're going to look at some future history and we're at what we call the Kelpies in Falkirk. The Kelpies stand 30 metres high and were completed by sculptor Andy Scott in 2013. The Kelpie is a mythical beast said to have the strength and endurance of 10 horses and the sculpture is called the Kelpies to indicate the transformation of this area to the Helix Parkland. The reality is the horses represent the heavy horse used in Scottish industry, pulling wagons, ploughs, barges and coal ships the length of the Fort and Clyde Canal. The horses, or Kelpies, are named Duke and Byron after the two real life models Andy used for a sculpture. They still work in the Pollock area and I imagine they have a less aggressive temperament than their feeble Kelpie relatives. Andy Scott also mentions Primo Carnera as being his inspiration, so the Italian boxer nicknamed the Ambling Alp has something to do with the Kelpies too. There are a few maquettes of the Kelpies as well, one on Ardrishig, a set in Edinburgh, Grant Park in Chicago and there's a few to travel about. They are probably the newest item that will reside on exploring Scotland's history, but they will make future history, I am sure. The Structural Steel Design Board in 2014 said they required considerable engineering finesse, while The Guardian described them as kitsch, bold and just rotten. Whatever you feel about them, they are a stunning installation of engineering and art. We did the Kelpies, an absolute masterpiece of engineering and art in my eyes. And then I remembered Falkirk is famous for another piece of engineering. That's the Falkirk wheel. And I'm going to jump her up there. It's really dark now. Mm -hmm. Exploring Scotland's history. Pitch black. If I move over here. You can see the Falkirk Wheel. I'm in the tunnel, it lights up at night, which is great. More modern history in the making. This is Rough Castle Tunnel. Spooky. Before the Falkirk Wheel, this section of the canal was served by a series of 11 locks. With a 35 metre difference in height, most of the day could be taken up due to the tonnage of water that needed displaced. I'll put a link to the Crennan Canal here, where I give a longer explanation of canal lock workings and actually get the assist in their operation. By the 1930s, the locks were disused and dismantled. The area was very overgrown and impassable by the 1970s. Like the Kelpies, this piece of engineering is future history. The 1990s spelled regeneration for the area, with Donald Dewar cutting the first turf here in 1999. A thousand people were employed in this construction. It has been designed to last for at least 120 years. The wheel was fully assembled at Butterley Engineering in Derbyshire. In 2001, it was dismantled there and transported to Falkirk on 35 lorries. On May the 24th, 2002, Queen Elizabeth opened the wheel as part of her Golden Jubilee celebrations. The wheel is 35 metres in diameter. The two opposing arms have Celtic inspiration, symbolising a double-headed axe. The gondolas each weigh 50 tonnes, but have a 500 tonne capacity for water and boats. They use Archimedes' principle of water displacement. Per half turn, the hydraulic motors consume 1.5 kilowatt hours, basically the same as boiling a kettle eight times 
Now that is impressive. It's the only rotating boat lift in the world. With the tiny amount of energy it uses, I can't see why it hasn't been utilised elsewhere. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and leave a comment. It really helps the channel grow. Can I take this opportunity to thank every individual who supports the channel via the coffee page? The link is also below. There are links for Facebook and Instagram pages of the same name, Exploring Scotland's History. Until next time, thank you for watching.